Good morning and thank you very much for joining us. I am Yuri Fularing. I'm straight off the bat, my friend, uh, and our guest this morning is uh, Mr. Libros Oshoma. Uh, thank you very much, as always, for coming on. Very active, um, quite frankly, you're on all the media now, in addition to your, your core function. So <laughs> I'm a friend, I'm a friend of... Uh, friend of the media. Media, yes. Really? Uh, and so, um, some people will be in TVC today, and uh -huh. then tomorrow they're in another station. So there I you have go. my friend Libros, who <laughs> used to be on TVC together, please. Uh, exactly. You know, so. Great to have you, Libros, because, um, uh, again, Shebi, you are a Delta man. Yeah, no, I'm a do, but I grew up in Delta. Uh, that, okay, okay. Mm. There's that sense in which I meant it. Mm. So, practically... Um, the, uh, and I ask that question simply because we're going to uh, talk about Delta and, shall we say, the um, uh, contentious battle uh, in the PDP uh, for, to, 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 to come up with a candidate there. Uh, yeah. it, it's been quite, some have even gone as far as calling it bitter. But look, where we are right now is that, well, let me leave you to do a lot of the explanations, but um, mm. there's David Edevier who, you know, came second after Mr. Boweri. Mm. And um, he has taken the winner of the PDP primaries to court, and the court and the high court granted, you know, uh, his, uh, his prayer and said that, you know, indeed, you were properly uh, elected. But not so, uh, apparently. When Mr. Delvie went to, uh, to another high court, the matter has been said that, okay, it is you. Where are we exactly? You need lawyers to help you out on this kind of a thing. Um, let's understand the contentions. And by the way, by way of background, it needs to be said that, well, former Governor Ibori and the present uh, sitting governor, uh, Mr. Ifain uh, Okowa, they are said to be in some sort of a supremacy tussle. Yeah, uh, that's what I learned, that um, all of this, mind you, all of these people at one point or the other served, you know, in the James Iboris government, including the current governor of Okoa. Um, so everybody... Even you know, Edevie was the yes, finance commissioner, commissioner yes, of James Ibori. James Ibori. And um, Okoa also was a commissioner in that government. Um, and um, including... Um, and Okoa, um, by the way, is now the presidential... The, I mean, the vice, vice pre presidential... Running mate the running mate. To the presidential candidate of the PDP. So... That's why, you know, all of this, it's a, it's a, it seems like a power play. Uh, and there may be some other things that had, might have happened before now. So you, you uh, but in that power play, what's basically, the law lays out requirement, and mm -hmm. that's where I'm, I'm uh, concerned. Mm -hmm. The law lays out requirements for candidates contesting for election. Um, and then... And, and so, Section 131, Section 177, and Section 318 of uh, the Constitution interprets um, the requirement. Uh, and it's very, the bar is so minimal, very minimal, okay. that um, all you need to become a governor in Nigeria is a school certificate or its equivalent. And its equivalent has been, had, had been interpreted in the same Constitution to mean the ability to read and write, you know, in the opinion of INEC. It's not much different from that of the presidency. Sister. Yes, yes, it's mm. the same thing. It's the um, same thing. Apart mm. from the age and the... Yes. No, and so, um, but the Supreme Court, um, if you remember in um, uh, Degi uh, Remyos case, the Bayesa APC running mate had also heard that um, the issue of um, submission of, um, of um, cert certificates you know, mm -hmm. if you had submitted a mm -hmm. certificate mm -hmm. before, mm -hmm. you must also be consistent yes, in yes, that yes, regard. Yes, yes. And so um, the Supreme Court had also, in that case, <laughs> you know, laid the foundation for what should be done. Okay. That um, um, he said them um, here, I will quickly read some part of, um, uh, he said, my question in paragraph 6 of part E of the first respondent INEC form is very specific. Have you ever presented a false certificate to INEC? We align with the position of the Learned Council to the appellant that this question relates to an election. For as long as candidate had previously presented a false certificate to INEC, mm -hmm. the same scenario played out itself vis a vis the provisions of Section 66.1 of the 1999 Constitution as amended, which is to the effect that, quote, no person mm -hmm. 
-hmm. shall be qualified to election for election to the Senate or to the House of Rep if he had presented a false certificate to INEC. The law is very clear to warrant any form of color colorated interpretation. The question is from INEC CF 001 and Section 66 of the United Gang Constitution as amended, whether a certificate that turned out to be forged has been presented, not whether the forger has been charged, tried, or convicted. Okay. okay. So, in this case... Now you trans bring all of yes. that, which it probably is what you lawyers call some sort of a precedent. Yes. You now yes, try and bring it yes, over yeah. so to this. In this. Does it case, match? In this case, you have a certificate that is valid. Yes. Being paraded by somebody who is not the owner. Allegedly. Yes, allegedly. Allegedly. So the because question... The, 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 I, will, I will explain it. Edebye has this. denied that. No, Oboro ah, Sorry, sorry. Oboro has, has, has denied that. Yeah, the question is, the question is, because that has been the argument in court that, um, oh, the certificate, if you are co contesting the validity of the certificate, it is, um, you should write to... Uh, the issuing authority. Mm -hmm. The issue, the question here is not the validity of the certificate, but the man parading the certificate. In, in, before Justice Taiwota, before that, the judgment before this uh, Justice O'Connor Bank, the name on the certificate is Francis O. Oborowery, mm -hmm. with a date of birth written on the face of the certificate as 12th of November 1979. Then, by an affidavit, Deposed to a 2003, Oboroweri Sheriff Oboroweri claimed that the certificate belonged to him, but that he was born on the 19th of June 1963 and not 12th of November 1979. The question now would be, can you, by an affidavit, correct the name and date of birth in a certificate that you didn't issue? Einek is alive. Mm, sorry. Waik is alive. If you, you went to Unilag and a certificate was duly issued you with a wrong name and a wrong date of birth, wouldn't it be proper for you to write to Unilag and say, please, this certificate you gave to me, I noticed that my date of birth and my name was not correctly written. Can you correct same? If you depose to an affidavit on the record of Unilag, that name will still be Oborowe, uh, uh, Francis Oboroweri O, and not Sheriff Orowedo, as you have claimed. And then, in another affidavit, okay, yes, in, in March 2022, he claimed that Sheriff was a name given to him at childhood. And then the question is, if you look at the primary school living certificate paraded and the uh, uh, YX certificate being paraded, there is no Sheriff. So if that name is a name you have been bearing from childhood, how come it is, didn't reflect? And instead of you to go to the issuing authority to say, look, this is my name, was wrongly spelled. You are deposing to affidavit. Do you know why? Because here, we want to correct everything with affidavit. That was what cost the APC, the candidate's job in, in Bayesa. Because the Supreme Court said, no, you can't be using affidavit. So in this case now, you can't even use a deed or pool to put the name together because on the face of that document, that originating document, mm -hmm. the answer is that it does not belong to you. So until you write to the authority to say, correct these anomalies, that certificate does not belong to you then. And therefore, also, you cannot use it. You can't use it you, you as can't you can't parade it. it. But let me just... Let, let then, me, let, let me that just, was why, Justice, quickly, okay. that was why... Justice um, Taiwo Taiwo yes. said that in his judgment, the body of the judgment, mm -hmm. that in view of this averment, the uh, in view of this averment in the further affidavit touching on what is termed the deed dated 7th day of July 2011 as exhibit 5, which was deposed to by the first defender to correct the discrepancies in his name and to re renounce his old name is not assailable in any way. On the face of the document, it is dated 7th of July, 2011. As aforesaid, but was stamped by Commissioner for Stamp Duty on the 29th of April, 1979. Dated July, 2011, but stamped by Commissioner for Stamp Duty, 1979. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How this is possible is better imagined as it defies all logic. Further, 
The certificate of FRS showing payment of stamp duty on this document was issued on the 29th of April 2022. This too clearly stands logic on its head. Given the date the document was purportedly made and the stamp of the Commissioner for Oath, which is Exhibit C. So an now, attempt... Uh, 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 sorry, sir. Additional, in the latest report, yes. as of Friday... Justice Okonabang. Yes, Justice Okonabang you know, of the High Court in Worry has now said that uh, the Federal High Court, you know, so the story goes as put out by Premium Times and other media,